institution wants you? You think this fucking institution wants you? You think you're like going up for a position and they're going to do what's right and like give you the time of day and actually interview you. Meanwhile, the position has already been fucking hired and they're only interviewing you because of some fucking lip service thing called the Rooney rule. Like they're literally only interviewing you because you're black for like a second. How fucking disgusting is that, dude? Like that, that sucks. That absolutely fucking sucks. That you probably weren't going to get it. Why did. why did you continue to go? Uh, I think, uh, I, I, Flores wasn't even a bad head coach. He wanted Justin Herbert or QB, but management took Tua Tagovailoa and then Steven Ross, Miami Dolphins owner wanted Tom Brady in free agency, which Flores didn't want to do because it would have been tampering. Management wanted to get rid of Flores because they wanted Deshaun Watson while Flores didn't want him. After they fired Flores, Ross came out and blamed them going after Watson on Flores. Dude, that's too much sports stuff. I don't... Uh, you're, 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 you're giving me too much sports ball shit, bro. Come on. Maybe just call it, call it the audacity of hope. Um, and uh, I, I was... You know, I have a belief that you know, there's good in people. I, I just do. Um, we and, knew uh, he wasn't getting that job at, on that day before that that Giants interview. We we reached out to you, CBS, to yeah. to, both, to all of you to yeah. to start talking about doing this interview today because we knew he wasn't getting the job. We knew it was a setup. We knew they were just trying to comply with the Rooney Rule. We started drafting the complaint, and uh, and here we are. The Giants say they are pleased and confident in the hiring process. Uh, I get the sense from the lawsuit and from you right now that you had a feeling like here we go again. This wasn't the first time you felt discriminated against in the league. Is that yeah, true? yeah. I mean, I've. I mean, the, ruling, the Rooney Rule is in, intended to, uh, you know, give minorities an opportunity to sit down in front of uh, ownership. But uh, ownership I think what it's turned into, is, turned into um, an instance where guys are just checking the box. Um, and that's been the case. I've been on some interviews in the past that, um, where that's, I've had that feeling. There's you know, always no way to, to, to know for sure, but, um, but you know. And I know, I know, I know I'm not alone there. You have to have the Rooney Rule. I think, Isn't I think. That, you, yeah. even, that, even isn't that a problem? What were we going to say? It's, 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 absolutely, I'm sorry, it's absolutely a problem. And one of the things that we're doing to help effectuate this change is, you know, the Rooney Rule's tied to the assumption that president's owners are going to do the right Once thing, hire the best, most website. qualified candidate. Yeah. What we want to do is tie, you know, certain things to performance and action through this. But, but Brian, the reason I, 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 the timing is really important here because you're actually up for two additional NFL jobs right now. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Why, why did you do this knowing from your own statement that you may have sacrificed your future in the NFL and you're a young man? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I, I let both the teams know that, you know, we we're going we to gonna file. But look, I love coaching. You know, I'm gifted to coach. I know that. Um, and the relationships I've built with players, coaches, support staff uh, i'm gifted to coach and i love coaching and i want to coach um and i've heard this... from reliable sources you're a very good coach <laughs> let the no record show it. always room for improvement yeah. but uh, <laughs> i like to think that as well um but this is bigger than coaching of course um, this is much bigger than coaching now we'll get back to the lawsuit um in regards to the broncos and the giants but i want to talk about the miami dolphins for a second um, you make claims that you were offered one hundred thousand dollars for each game this team lose subsequently uh, t to get a better draft pick. Um, kind of speak on that, because you don't hear about that going on behind closed doors. I'm a former player. I know you as a coach. You want to win. There's no shot he gets a job after this, right? Like, I, 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 it's just like, the NFL's not rigged. Uh, copium is, is silly. Like, the NFL is rigged in the sense that, like, Teams throwing fucking games is unacceptable. He will definitely be he will definitely be blackballed. Uh, teams throwing uh, teams throwing games is unacceptable, but like teams playing poorly specifically so they can like get better draft picks. I thought that was like a known thing, right? Owners are good old boys with a fraternity. Same reason why Cavern and got blackballed. They pay to lose stuff. We'll get the most action because of the gambling partnerships. 
Maybe as a coordinator, but he'll never be a head coach. But he knew that going in, and that's why it's a brave move. Win. I walk in that locker room. I want to win. I don't hear people from the front office and the above making those type of decisions that can change the outcome of your coaching career. Uh, yeah. Uh, look, this game's done a lot for me. Um, I grew up not far from here in the projects in, in, in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Um, I didn't grow up with a lot. And this game, you know, changed my life. Uh, so to attack the integrity of the game, that's, that's what I felt was happening in that instance, and um, I wouldn't stand for it. And that was Dolphins owner Stephen Ross. Yes. Yes. So. And you think it hurt uh, your I, career? I, I, think it, I think it hurt my standing with, with, within the organization um, and ultimately was the reason why I was let go. Well, word on the street now, though, Brian, is What's that up, either baby? you torpedoed Take your career, that this is the side. craziest thing you could have done, or that it's very brave and very bold of you to do. How are you feeling? Are you? I mean, he definitely torpedoed his career, and it's also a brave and bold thing to do. Almost a year. Love you, Chad Hassan. You are also alleged that he interviewed the Broncos in 2019, but John Elway and the owner were drunk as fuck and obviously weren't taking the interview seriously. Another toke interview to satisfy the Rooney rule. Peace with your decision, and was this a very difficult decision for you to make to file a lawsuit before you have a job? Uh, uh. I understand the risk and yes wait from what I understand didn't they put a fucking shitty roster together okay look this is where my, this is the extent of my sports ball knowledge but from what I understand yes tanking is usually more discreet usually it's purposely putting together a shitty roster and having the losses pile up naturally except they did that in Florida and he still fucking uh coached the shitty roster too well uh and and that's why he was like dude I'll give you more money allegedly it was a difficult decision. And so I they could get, so they could get better draft um, picks. And like I said, I, I, I'm, I love coaching. I do. Um, it's something that um, I'm passionate about. It brings me joy, um, and I love helping young people reach their potential and become the best versions of themselves. I'm gifted to do that, Brian. Um, but this is bigger than, than that. I mean, can I just say, in 2022, the fact that we don't have one black owner, we only have one black head coach. That's what I actually want to. You know, he, I mean, you know, really, Brian needs to be applauded for stepping forward to be the first person to really contest it. It's been talked about. Well, you've heard you know, the statement. But, that, but now he has stepped forward to yeah. challenge it. You've heard the statement from the NFL in a statement, diversity is core to everything we do. There are a few issues on which our clubs and our inter in internal teams spend more time on. Yeah, they've acknowledged but, their problems. You know, the executives there have acknowledged their problems. Now they're, the PR team is trying to spin something. You know, they could take two different paths. They could, they could take the path of trying to defend and litigate, or we hope, that they take the path and they're, they're of actually trying to correct things to be an example not only what is this oh my god is that fucking a lot of black <laughs> players or a lot of great <laughs> black baseball men who would dearly love to be in managerial positions and i guess what i'm really asking you is to you know peel it away a little bit just tell me why do you think it is is there still that much prejudice in baseball today no i don't believe it's prejudice i i, I truly believe that they may not have some of the uh, necessities to uh, be, uh, let's say, a field manager or p perhaps a, a general manager. Do you really believe that? Well, I don't say that they're, they're all of them, but they they certainly are short. How many quarterbacks do you have? How many pitchers do you have that are black? It, it seems yeah, but thing I mean, you know, I got to tell you, that sounds like the same kind of garbage we were hearing 40 years ago about players when they when they were saying, ah, not uh, not not, uh, not really, uh, not really um, cut out. Hey, you remember the days, you know, they hit a black football player in the knees, and you know, no, that really sounds like garbage. If you if you forget no, what you're saying, so it's not it's not garbage, Mr. Koppel, because uh, I played on a on a college team, and the center fielder was black. And then the backfield at NYU with the yeah, he's got black friends, bro. It's not racist. He played with other black players, dude. Everybody knows. Everybody knows you can't be fucking uh, racist if you've like been around black people famously. The fullback who was black never knew the difference of whether he was black or white. We were teammates. So, it, it what is the? What are we supposed to in? What's the? Uh, what are we supposed to get out of what he just said? So he knows black people are incapable? Is that what he's saying? He's like, no, 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 it's not garbage. I've, I've been around, I've been around black people. So I know for a fact that they can't fucking, uh, they don't have what it takes to be a, a general manager. I'm an expert, dude. <laughs>
<laughs> like that's what he's saying. That is that's his argument. He's just oh my god. It just might be that they they why are, are black uh, men or, or black people not good swimmers? Because they don't have the buoyancy. Hassle, 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 thankful. Wait, what? Father Arjan. Black people don't have the buoyancy? What the fuck? Are you serious? What the fuck? That is yo. Yo. That's some good old fashioned old school racism, dude. He was like, let me let me crank up the racism dial to the maximum degree before getting off the show. He was like, I didn't say enough. He's like, I didn't say enough in the beginning part. I think I couldn't make myself clear. Let me just click crank it out to 11 before. It oh, fuck. It's on. It's in my hand now. I broke it. Oh, God damn it. Yo, his apple pie must taste amazing. Oh, yeah, dude. 100%. Has Sammy, has Sammy, has high, has high. That's awesome. That's crazy. Dude, there's a fucking joke from the South related to slave ship jumpers. Holy shit. I, I can't tell if he's joking or if he unironically believes that like black people are more dense and, and less buoyant and therefore can't swim well. Or if he was just like straight up making a joke. Half a year, baby. Dude, my sister's bio teacher in Missouri said black people have denser bones this was in 2010. Oh my God. Bill Burr on this. In the stands. I mean, that's, that's just like what's entertainment for me now, you know? I like that Jimmy the Greek moment that happens in sports, you know? Like once every four or five years, you know that? Like some 50, 55 year old white dude tries to explain why black people are kicking the Doesn't matter if it was a joke. No, it's worse. No, 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 no. I'm saying him trying to make a racist joke is worse than, in my opinion, they're both horrible, right? They're both horrifically racist, but you misunderstood me. I was saying like, is it a joke as in, is he trying to fucking uh, make a joke about like, uh, uh, like slaves jumping off the slave ship, which is straight up fucking worse than if he unironically was just like so racist that he thought black people were more dense. Does that make sense? Alex like, I was trying to figure out his intention. Shit out of white people in practically every major sport, you know? I mean, he already, he, he's already cranked off the racism dial. Like, it's just, there's no coming back from that, no matter what. And it always goes down the same way, right? There's always like three white dudes and the one white dude in the middle, he's always like the guy with like the theory. You know, he's always like, you know, it seems these, uh, these African-American athletes, they, uh, they seem to have this, uh, this quick twitch uh, muscle fiber. You know, there's a uh, slow twitch and there's uh, this quick twitch. And the second the dude says that, like the other two white dudes start like sliding out of frame. Like, okay, this guy's getting fired and I'm not gonna be part of this highlight. Nice knowing you, Ned, keep that seat warm, right? Even I know this and I like don't know shit about sports, but even I remember this where it was like, this dude was just like straight up talking about how like, you know, black people have fat, uh, fast twitch muscle fibers and they're like. And the dude in the middle, he's just like hell bent on getting fired. You know, he's just, he starts like bringing up slavery. And evidently they were reading the strongest man with the strongest woman and that quick twitch. I love the guy that says everything is racist, except like you're a defender of Bill Burr. No, are you not? You've been a subscriber for fucking six months here. Like. Anyone, anyone that fucking, anyone that has that take automatically, like everyone that's being sarcastic about like, everything is racist. Okay, bro. Like, but you also love Bill Burr probably like he's a comedian. So what's up? Do you not, uh, do you not recognize that he, he's got a good take here? Like what was, what's the deal? Typical fucking Mena idiot, by the way. Six month subscriber, Mena boy over here being fucking racist. Anyway, let's continue. Literally 20 minutes later, that dude's on TV. He's like fired, right? 
He's crying, his family's standing there. He's got like a box of shit from his desk with like an Emmy sticking out. He's like, I don't know what I said. I was just talking about the quick twitch and the slow twitch. And I was, wasn't just trying to make a point. No, I love that. I love seeing people mess up their careers like that. It's just funny to me. Plus, I gotta admit, as a white dude, on some level, I have to believe in that theory, because it's like, are white dudes that bad at basketball? <laughs> I can't even watch the NBA anymore, man. It's like every highlight, the white dude's like that, the black dude has like his nuts in his face, fucking crap! <laughs> I'm just sitting at home like, for the love of God, tackle the guy. <laughs> Jesus Christ, get out of the way. Do you ever get tired of those two nuts flying over your head? You know you're gonna be on Sports Center. Just get out of the way. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, there's gotta be something to that theory. I saw this show one time on Runaway Slaves. It was one of the most amazing programs I've ever seen in my life. Dude, when you ran away as a slave, you just didn't run to the end of the driveway and be like, ah, fuck that job, just start walking down the street. Dude, you had to like run through whole states. There's dogs chasing you, you're hurtling shit, you're swimming. Those were the first fucking triathletes. And there was nobody helping them out. There was no dude on the side of the road like, come on, man, two more states, you're in Ohio. Suck it up, you're looking good, you're looking good. <laughs> yeah, you... Dude, you were on your own. Is it any wonder? 250, 300 years of that shit, and then I'm gonna D you up in gym class? It ain't happening. I come from hundreds of years of alcoholics. I got like half a liver, you know what I mean? It's just... <laughs> you know what's funny to me about that stuff? You can't even like, you know, I obviously know that, that theory's crazy, but it's just like, you can't even bring up how well black people do, are doing in sports. Everybody gets all weird about it, which I don't understand, because it's like a compliment, you know? Like, feel how weird it is right now. You know, I just brought that shit up. I like, it's... I'm saying something good, right? I saw, I saw a coach get in trouble for that shit. Like, his team was like 0-6 or something. They just couldn't win, and every week the press was just getting on him more and more and more, right? And the dude, he was just like flustered, and he had like a moment of honesty. They were like, why can't you guys win a game? He's like, oh, you know, oh, the offense isn't getting it done, you know, defense, you know, they're too slow, and they just run up. Tell him, we gotta get some more black guys on this team, but I'm telling you, it's just not... And immediately, everybody's like, what, 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 what? what? Everyone started freaking out, like they had no idea what this dude was talking about. It's like, are you watching Sports Center? Or do you see the Olympics? Like, I love the 100-meter dash, right? There's always, there's always like, like, like nine black dudes and that, that one token white guy in like lane eight. And I'm just sitting there going, come on, man, one time. Just one time, just, just win the bronze, just do what you gotta do. And the white dude always stays with him to like the first turn, then he like fucking blows out his hammy. Those other eight black dudes are like Phew. Where's that white dude the next Olympics? He's like up in the broadcast booth, his career's over. He's, where, he's like a commentator. Yeah, it's gonna be a great race. Still can't feel my fucking toes, but I'm telling you. No, I don't get it. It's like a compliment. We're saying you, you, you're fast. That's a good thing, right? People start all freaking out. Oh, you're acting like that's all we can do. You're saying we can't be scientists. No, we're not. All we're saying is if there was a race through the microscopes, you fuckers would win. <laughs> We're just saying that you're fast. You get there first. Your lab coat would be flapping in the wind. I'd get there like three minutes later all cramped up. Are you, are you looking at bacteria? No, you go first. You just go first. Jesus Christ. That was a Volvo. The guy ran by a Volvo in street shoes. I've never seen that before in my life. No, I, I get into those arguments all the time. All the time. Friends of mine will be like, well, how come any time a black athlete does something, they say it's an athletic move. Any time a white athlete does it, they say it's an intelligent move. And it's like, well, f fair enough, man. It just, just depends. Kind of a weird take. Positive stereotypes are still stereotypes. Yeah. They are. Making jokes about it. I don't know if you know this, but what he's doing right here, he's a comedian. Okay. Comedian. And what he's doing is making jokes. And when you hear a joke like that, you have to either go, I understand the context and the intent behind this. And I find this to be funny and go, ha ha. Or you go, hmm, I don't like this. It's kind of problematic. And then you keep it to yourself.
depends on what you're doing. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, if you read a defense, white or black, that's an intelligent move, right? But if you take off from the foul line, jump over nine other dudes and throw the shit down, those other nine guys aren't standing there like, fuck, why didn't I think of that shit? <laughs> Here I am dribbling around, guys. I think that's some superhero shit. See, like a cake flapping in the wind with a big <laughs> S on your chest. I'm telling you, man, that, that's the funny thing about Hitler. <laughs> Just let me finish. Let, let me work my way. Let me work my way through this idea. No, that's my, my favorite, my favorite sports clip is that Jesse Owens shit. I just love it because hey, their whole angle was fucked up. He made Hitler leave in like the third quarter, right? He's putting down his number one finger, just fucking walking out of the stadium. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Their whole thing was like, we are going to create a superior race. It's like, dude, I think we accidentally already did that. <laughs> you know, we sent a select group of people to the gym every day for a couple hundred years. It's paying dividends. They're fucking dunking on us every day. <laughs> dude, how quiet was that limo ride home with Hitler? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know he was talking crazy shit when they were on the way there. They were all amped up. We are going to dominate Sieg Heil. Just going off. <laughs> that whole ride home, they're just sitting there all quiet. You're sitting next to an even angrier than usual Adolf Hitler. <laughs> trying to make some sort of small talk like, hey, it is one nice day, isn't it? You know, nice No. Yeah. Hassle. Oh, uh, that's not okay to say. Cancel him, dude. Fuck it. Cancel Bill Burr. Do it. Oh, man. It's crazy. It's been a while since I've, like, actually heard fucking stand-up that doesn't revolve around people fucking constantly complaining about how uh, the youth uh, nowadays uh, can't fucking take a joke or something. Anyway, yeah, I know, I know. I'm not going to play the, the Jimmy the Greek uh, comments again. Part of the reason why uh, Bill Burr is, is uh, really funny or what do I always say about uh, comedy? Like when, you, when it comes from a place of understanding, when it comes from a place of understanding the fucking subject matter, you can make good jokes about it. Part of the reason why Bill Burr is, uh, is, is capable of making uh, still race-related uh, humor Three months till the brain that uh, revolves around black people is because of his wife. Like, he's been in a loving marriage uh, for many, many years. So he, he's not like, you know... He's Irish? Yeah, that's why. And Patrice O'Neill, too, for sure. His relationship with Patrice O'Neill. I suggest you check out all Chris Rock's stand up, some good stuff for discussion. Like when you made that joke about trans people all being, uh, uh, yeah, hearts of iron for addicts. Exactly. I think my funniest, my funniest trans joke is, is uh, Doreen though. I mean, straight up. Like, I think that was, that was pretty fire. Like, imagine you just... You have an opportunity to finally like choose a name. You know what I mean? Something that many people d don't really get the opportunity to do. And you just go with Doreen. Not good. You stole that shit from Twitter. I 100,000% did not. Fuck you. If anything, someone fucking heard me say it and then tweeted that. One. How dare you, dude? How fucking dare you? It's actually pretty funny, though, because you think it's stolen. So I guess thank you for complimenting it. Oh, 
When people know your priors, you get a lot more leeway in joking about things because people don't assume maliciousness unless they're leftists, in which case, no jokes. Yeah, that's true. 19 month brain rot. Or Gilbert. I don't understand how this is different from Joe Rogan saying just jokes. <sighs> Intent, context, background, your level of involvement with the community that you're speaking out against or about. All of these things play a role because obviously nothing is just like... When you read a fucking joke in a written format, you have already removed it from a million different contextual layers, okay? Okay. That's precisely why it's not the fucking same as, like, actually uh, uh, listening to a stand-up bit. Okay? Anyway, it's a statistical impossibility that NFL head coaches would be this white at random. No different than if you woke up tomorrow and 50% of the NHL coaches were black. Also, the overwhelming arrogance of white folks to believe we rose to the top of every industry on merit alone is unfathomable. I was thinking about going down this. This is what Nick and Wright I, said. I had two different avenues that I was thinking about going down this. And I, you talked me out of going down the one that my gut was. My gut was, I'm going to prove it to you mathematically. I've got the Bayes theorem at my disposal. We can do the numbers on percentage of players, percentage of players that become coaches, and the statistical impossibility, impossibility, that if it's random, if it's fair, if it's just meritocracy, that we would have one team currently coached by a black guy, that the last two hiring cycles, 16 jobs have been open, one was filled by a black guy, and that guy was summarily fired, and a lot of people thought he was hired to be fired in David Cully. But I don't know if people want math this early in the morning, so instead, I'm going to go to the more emotional reaction, which is this. If you woke up tomorrow, and half of the head coaches in the NHL were black, living in America, would that strike you as a little odd? It's like, well, how did that happen? I, it, the league is, you know, 2% black and half the head coaches are black. If you woke up tomorrow <laughs> and half of professional hockey's coaches were black, would you think, well, there must be some type of sustained effort or something, but not just a meritocracy that is happening that is leading to this. Of course you would. Because it's unimaginable. But that is exactly what is happening in the NFL on a statistical basis as far as to have 70% of the league in a league where the vast majority of head coaches and coordinators played at least at the collegiate level to have this minute amount of representation. And the only, it is the most frustrating thing for me, Wilds, is this. That... The response to anything like this from folks that don't want to see what is clearly in front of their faces, well, you just gotta, you just want to hire the best person for the job. Of course you do. Of course you do. But it is the Im implication, and you see this across fields. I mean, I 100% agree with him. I don't know what this dude's background is, but like, I do 100% agree with him that it's like, it, it's it's ridiculous to assume that like there's not. Like, the, the assumption that comes along with, like, looking at the NFL uh, uh, coaches uh, and, and the demographics is that, like, oh, no, they definitely got there because they're the fucking best of the best. That's ridiculous. It's an entire system uh, that, that exists everywhere in this country, for the record. It's an entire system where, like, you don't get elevated into lower coaching positions. And then if there are less lower coaches, like less like, I don't know, fucking offensive coaches, defensive coaches, whatever the fuck, then less likely to have black head coaches, less likely to uh, less likely to then elevate into even higher positions in management, right? General managers, stuff like that. That's precisely how this works. There is a there is a there is an end to your career as a black person who plays football. Your career is done. After, after you're done uh, playing, you're, you're done. You're completely done.
it's ridiculous to assume that uh, to assume that there is no, uh, there's no future for. I mean, there there aren't enough good black coaches. Like it's just completely ridiculous. That hey, holy shit, boohoo! I'm black and oppressed. Is this entire channel? I mean, we're quite literally talking about you know a very openly racist thing that happened in the NFL. But since you are most likely a racist piece of shit, uh, it's just very difficult for you to comprehend that. You know, what are you gonna do about it, dude? It must be really confusing. It must be really, really, really fucking confusing. Living in a world where, you know, very obvious that uh, things are changing, but you're stuck in the old ways of thinking because you're dumbass, possibly related to one another, uh, stupid fucking uh, pure genetic gene pool parents uh, shat you out in the fucking bathtub and then basically fucking educated you in that old way of thinking. So now your dumbass inbred ass is legitimately just confused and scared. So you're just like, oh man, oh man, oh black people are oppressed. I'm, I'm hearing it so much. Very pathetic. It'll be better though, one day. I'm a minority myself and don't cry about my setbacks for my race. Ah ha ha. Cry about being black more for I'm, I don't know if you know this, but I'm white. Careful. Asante, we said you can't be mean to males. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Motherfuckers. Like I'm a minority, probably ginger. Colin Kaepernick, A. Reed, Brian Flores, they went against the status quo, and for that, they will likely never work in the NFL again. This tells you everything, but at least, hey, at least the NFL did this. End racism. Stop hate. Let's go. Why are white people, mostly white males, at the top of almost every field in America? Well, it must be a meritocracy. Like, the, uh, say that thing out loud. Think about any industry. And it's like, even in sports... Where you can't be like, well, you know, white people just have more access. No, black guys all over the league. And yet still, when it gets to, as Broussard said, the positions where it's like, okay, but we need a thinker. We need someone. We need a real smart, cutting-edge guy. There's a clear ceiling on what the gotcha. vast majority of NFL ownership believes black people are equipped to do. And it is undeniable, statistically wild, and I do think it's going to take a seismic event like what Brian Flores yep. is doing to potentially try to change the paradigm because it's wow. going in the wrong direction. The hiring cycles have gotten whiter and whiter, not more and more diverse over the last few years. Um... <clears throat> You want to know how that motherfucker is not like the dude that we just banned wasn't actually like uh, a, a minority in the way that he's saying it? Because if you fucking experience any kind of marginalization uh, from uh, a, a dominant oppressive uh, majority, then you would recognize solidarity with others who, you know, see the same thing. You wouldn't, you wouldn't turn around and be like, whatever, dude, I made it. Just shut the fuck up. Then, you know, you didn't, you didn't experience it then. What is this one? Oh, this, that's awesome. That's awesome. Motherfucker was in here following since June 27, 2019. This is the one time he's like, now is my time to speak up. If black Americans make up 12% of the population and 12.5% of head coaches are black, isn't that expected representation? First of all, if you look at historically, what percentage of fucking coaches are black? Uh, that doesn't even make sense. This is the exact same argument with like, this is the exact same fucking argument with black senators. At the San Abbey. Why is it so hard for fucking races to like actually do math? Why?
It does not make sense. Also, 70% of the players are black, dude. 70% of the players are black. And you can't even look at like an individual season in the league. You have to look at across the board, historically, since black people were allowed to play football. Okay? Like, when you look at it across the board throughout the history of the NFL... Yeah, and 1 out of 32 is not 12% either, but it doesn't even matter. It's just like, it, it's so fucking idiotic to make, this, uh, to, make, to, to make this assertion. Only for the NFL, but for American society. To and lead by so when you talk about the owners, you know, you got 31 white billionaires, the and then the Packers have a special situation. 70% about of the players are, are black. Uh, it, it, there's a power dynamic that's visible there. Yeah. In the lawsuit, there's this explosive line that the NFL is managed much like a plantation. That's a, a direct quote. Why did you decide to settle on that metaphor? Seven months. Uh, I, just, I think, I, I think uh, look, we, we, didn't hit the, we didn't have to file a lawsuit for I'm gonna the back. world to know that there's a problem from a, from a hiring standpoint in regards to minority coaches in the National Football League. The numbers speak for themselves. Right. Uh, we filed the lawsuit um, so that we could create some change. Um, and that's important to me. I think we're at a fork in the road right now. You know, we're either going to keep it the way it is mm -hmm. or we're going to go in another direction and actually make some real change where um, we're actually changing the hearts and minds of those who make decisions to hire uh, head coaches, um, executives, etc. And I that's where we got to get. We got to change hearts. But Brian, and minds. I heard someone say, but don't companies or clubs have the right to hire the person they think is the best qualified for the job, or the person they feel is right for the whatever job. race they are. Whatever race they are, yes, they do. You know, uh, and, uh, and that's 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 very reasonable to me. But at the same time, uh, there are uh, I know a very uh, a lot of very capable coaches, executives, um, minorities. Uh, coaches, executives who are minorities um, and in a lot of cases are um, as qualified, um, more qualified, and quite frankly, better than, than, than their white co the counterparts. They're, 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 they're not given the though, opportunity. They're, they're not given an equal opportunity. Exactly. And, you know, when we talk about this fork in the road that the NFL has, and, Gail, you talked about the statement that they released denying and saying that they're going to defend what was absent from their response to the 60-page yeah. complaint with serious allegations from a decorated head coach is, how about we'll investigate? We're troubled by this. Yeah. We'll look into it. Immediate, you know, no denial disregard. and disregard and defend. Yeah. But I mean, that part was really funny that the NFL was like, oh, no, uh, yeah, that's this is untrue. How do you know, motherfucker? You didn't even look into it. It took you two hours after the fucking lawsuit came out. You didn't even read it. You were just like, nope, not true. Oh, cool. Okay, got it. It's fine. The point about the companies have the right to hire who they think is best qualified, I, I, we all agree with that, but the difference here, if what you're saying is true and you seem to have receipts, they knew ahead of time that you weren't going to get the job. So okay. I'm thinking, why waste your time and theirs? And the word minority is, is it's loaded because it has different connotations. Yeah. We might be marginalized in certain areas, but our contributions to this game, both on the field and outside of the lines, are immense. Yeah. And when you have quality coaches that are available, that are gifted Pay and can lead teams paycheck. but not getting the opportunity, that's why you are standing for what you're standing COVID. for. Um, but I want you to have one last word. Those are cold facts. That's right. Yeah. One last thing, I'll let you say this, but you still want to coach in this league. I absolutely want to coach in this league, but I also know that this isn't, I'm not the only story here. Yeah. I'm not the only one with a story to You're tell. You're speaking up for decades I'm, of this I'm, going on this and is, hopefully stopping it from happening. Is, this is, you know, there are people who have come before me, and, 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 and um, I know there are others who, who, have, a, who have similar stories, and um, it's hard to speak out. Um, it is. You know, yeah. you're giving up. You're making some sacrifices, but... Um, this is, again, this is bigger than football. This is bigger than coaching. Thank yeah. you for using your voice. You're doing the right thing. Thank you. Yo, there we go. Black people make up 13% of the population, yet nearly 60% of the athletes in the NFL. But people in the NFL is, but still the NFL is systemically raised against black people. The system is con conspiring to make them world famous millionaires. I'm so glad that Brian Flores is expo exposing the plot.
Love that, dude. Fucking love that. Of course, the theocratic fascist. With the most incredibly predictable take, dude. I don't understand. Like, plantations are uh, comprised 70% of black people. What the fuck? Uh, guess what, sweaty? Seems like we're, uh, you know, giving meaningful employment to black people in, this, uh, in the antebellum South, so. Since my second year of college, and now I'm in my second year of med school, lol, w Good one, Matt. Time, Good one, dude. Broadcast. Okay, okay, I'm gonna fucking listen to a goddamn Skip Bayless and, and well, most importantly, uh, Shannon Sharp, okay? Where is it? I, I think I have this already. Being a Jets fan is realizing a rival coach was offered 100 stacks to let you win and you still couldn't pull it off. <laughs> I commend Brian Flores. Hopefully other black coaches join this lawsuit. Uh, and there's change, but how do you change a person's heart? The old saying is it's easier to build strong children than repair broken men. These owners are 60 plus. They're setting their ways and aren't changing. Oh, yeah. Job. It seems to me that you think always the best guy for the job happens to look like you. That's not an accident. Mm -mm. But Skip, it's like that sports are a microcosm of society. That's how it no normally works in society. You it takes a special person to hire someone that doesn't look like them that doesn't talk like them, that doesn't come from a similar background as them, or doesn't know someone that knew them. Yep. It takes a special person to do that. And Brian Flores is saying, look, guys, you bringing me in, you had already hired Brian Dayball. You bringing me in was a sham. But what they do, Skip, is that you look at uh, Josh McDaniels. He got the head coaching job. What did he do? He bring his white GM with him. You see how they do that? Now, uh, 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 Brian Leftwich tried to do the exact same thing. He tried to bring Adrian Wilson. Nah, we ain't gonna let you do that. We want to keep Trent Balk in here. After he done ruined something. Skip is baseless on these topics, on every topic. San Francisco. Even I know He went this. to Jacksonville and ruined it that. Nah, we gonna keep the status quo. They're not gonna let you get too many. They're not gonna let you no, get too many pop. Skip, I think sometimes mm -hmm. is that we get, the, uh, we get a job and we like, man, I don't want to have too many have too many of us because they're going to think a certain thing. Well, our counterparts never think like that. They never think, well, I bet I can't hire a white guy because they might think we got too many of us. That's just our thinking. That's the way we think. So you, you tip your hat to him, but in the end, Skip, you're asking, you're asking an awful lot. You're asking an awful, awful lot um, of this man when you got 32 billionaires that will stand united. Skip, I'm sure they bicker with each other. They might, there are some that might not like each other. But when it comes to being attacked from the outside, I agree. No. ain't nothing breaking them. Nothing. The worst week but let me tell you life. what the NFL Thanks will do. The owners are going to say, you know what, we're hassle. doing the best we can. We'll let them put another slogan on their helmet. We'll put some slogan in the end zone. We'll hang something from the building to show that we have the symbolism, but nothing with teeth, nothing of substance. And that's what they do. They'll pacify you. Okay, we'll give you a month. But we ain't going to change anything. Okay, we'll give you some slogans, but nothing changes. Yeah. And Brian Flores is willing to risk, I believe, his coaching future in order to bring about change. And he said it. Skip, he understands. It might cost me my coaching career. But if... Let's hear what Stephen A. Smith has Brian to say Flores about this, and then we're done. Standpoint of coverage. Uh, because it takes a lot of courage to do what he's doing, and clearly he's not doing it just for himself. He is in pursuit of, with a class action lawsuit, basically inviting other coaches to come in and maybe and, and, and likely express themselves and show how the conditions which he feels that he's been subjected to is similar to what a lot of black coaches have been going through for quite some time. And we all know what my position has been as it pertains to African-American coaches, particularly in the National Football League. And college football is just as, if not more egregious, at least until recently. Uh, the NFL, what I've reminded people over the last few weeks, Keyshawn, is that the Rooney Rule was instituted in 2003. When the Rooney Rule was instituted, essentially compelling you to at least interview African-American coaches and give them uh, something close to a... The Rooney Rule is so perfect, dude. It's so fucking perfect. It's such a perfect representation 
of the fucking bullshit lip service, okay? They're like, oh, are we, are we just like, do we just figure out that, uh, you know, teams happen to fire uh, black coaches despite their higher level of success? Or uh, teams happen to fire black, sorry, teams happen to fire black coaches at a disproportionate rate when they're fucking successful? Yeah, we'll just like, uh, we'll make sure that we just give uh, we'll just we'll just interview like uh, more black people for the position. That's it. It's like such a, it is such a classic like liberal bull, uh, bullshit fucking lip service uh, thing. Classic. As high. Stephen A. Smith is racist towards Asians the way white coaches the NFL are racist towards blacks. He's not worth listening to. <laughs> Bro, he's a sports bro he's a sports commentator, okay? I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about, but look, I'm just not surprising. If he is, it doesn't matter to me right now, okay? Also, love that you just dropped the blacks in there. AZN identity, Andy. Okay. Well, fair and Let's continue. Opportunity. There were three African American coaches in the National Football League. We are 19 years removed from the institution and implementation of the Rooney. He had a bad take on Otani, but I think he apologized. Oh. And there is now one head coach. There have been about seven or eight openings this offseason for NFL head coaches. Five people have been hired. None of them have been black as a head coach. And so when we look at it from that perspective, it is clearly alarming. Now, let me get down to this. There are people that are saying Brian Flores doesn't have much of a case. You heard the National Football League say it's meritless. I'm not buying that one bit. You know, I'm familiar with court proceedings and what have you, and there's something called summary judgment. And I believe that man is going to get past that. He is going to get past summary judgment. And there is going to be some explanations that the NFL is going to be required to disseminate. Bob. Oh, yeah, he said the face of baseball should speak English. Uh, yeah, no, that's bullshit. Seven months into my socialist... In live in a fucking global world, man. It's not, it's not happening. Like, you're just not... You're not going to be able to pull that off. <clears throat> All right, so that's enough on NFL's racism. I want to quickly talk... She's about and because there will be more about nfl's racism and all this shit i know chatters love sports ball takes uh i know i know chatters want me to do more sports ball i know k kona three head uh sports is fucking losing their shit in the discord but you know we're gonna talk more about this when ben shapiro covers it when fucking you know tucker carlson covers it because this is gonna this is gonna be an ongoing issue for at least up until this weekend. Let's be real. So, you, you know, you got a little bit of sports ball talk out of me. We watched Undisputed, all this shit. You know, that's things that you normally would never see. So, more will come. Just a never-ending cycle, kind of like the top of the hour ad break that comes at the top of every hour. Okay? Okay. And if you want an uninterrupted broadcasting experience, then all you need to do is subscribe. You can do that for $5. You can do that for free if you don't have $5. And if you don't even have a Twitch Prime uh, because you, you know, don't have an Amazon Prime that you can connect to your Twitch account, then you know people like Video James 1019 will gift five subs, and maybe you'll be lucky enough to get gifted an ad or gifted a, an ad, get gifted a subscription. If you're not lucky, make your own luck. Here's a woman ad right now. Crowder had a take on this. Brian Flores was paid $3 million and went 24-25 over three seasons with the Dolphins, and he blames Racism for being fired rather than his performance. Then his lawyer calls him the Rosa Parks of NFL. So... To a menu hacker, a double cheeseburger and McNuggets with tangy barbecue sauce isn't just a double cheeseburger and McNuggets with tangy barbecue sauce. It's a crunchy double. ba da ba ba, -ba. I want him to lose more. Like, I'm sure Steven Crowder is a big, tough guy. He, he knows enough, right? 
if I know this about the NFL, that like franchises like their teams to fucking tank so they can get better draft picks, then he must know this too. He's a big muscle man. He's a big, big macho man, you know? How does he not know? That's so, that's so strange. Uh, but I don't know a whole lot about the NFL, so this is time for Gerald Actually No Sports. Oh, he doesn't know a whole lot. Oh, he's, he's a Canuck, that's why. He's like, I don't know a whole lot about the NFL, but I'll talk to me about hockey. All right, thank you, so dumpster. the only thing I know about the Miami... Thank you, Dumpster Baby, for the five gifted subs. And thank you, Drake Klaus, for Dolphins the five gifted subs. Dolphins is Dan Marino, and that's because I watched Ace Ventura. There you go. So Lights tell me out. <laughs> what is going on. There's this guy, Brian Flores. Yeah, head coach Brian Flores has filed a class action lawsuit. He purports to represent 40 other individuals, and um, he's, he's saying that the NFL's hiring practices for black coaches were racist. So let me just give you just a little information about this. He's suing three teams right now. He's fired by the Miami Dolphins after three seasons. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> I'm sorry. At a certain point, I just... I don't have any shits left to give. I mean, the NFL. Well, yeah. I you're mean, talking about the significant portion, I think, the well, majority the players, of NFL players. But now they're saying, yeah, but not enough coaches. Dude, what the fuck is he saying? Like, the part of the NFL that is unironically a meritocracy, okay, is, for the most part, the player position. You can't get away with stacking the deck with shitty players, okay? You can't fucking do that. That's precisely the reason why 70% are black. That is like literally the closest you can get to a meritocracy. Whereas coaches are still important, but you definitely can, you definitely can pick inexperienced coaches, bad coaches, and still get away with it. Let's go. Especially considering that most coaches are coming, and this might shock you, from the player base. That's the reason why people say the player base is 70% black, but the coaches are not. Like, obviously, it doesn't have to be 70% black coaches, but don't you find it a little strange that uh, the, the labor force is 70% black, but then the coaches, which is like kind of a managerial position while you're still definitely a worker in that circumstance, like the, the coaches just are not. Uh, there's, no, there's no proportional... Uh, representation in any meaningful capacity. I wonder why that happens. Incredible stuff. Well, right, okay. it, here's the thing. It's like right. coaches and people in the front office, and it's like, well, we got a lot of assistant coaches. Sure. Not enough, blah, blah, blah. That's right, so yeah. three teams that are, are being sued, the Dolphins, Broncos, and Giants. And let's just keep in mind that one of the reasons that he was fired is because in three seasons he went 24 and 25 with the Miami Dolphins. So wow. 24 and 25, now I know like the, the, you may think this is like baseball and he can turn it around at the end of the year with 170-something games. Or I didn't think that, but sure. That's not true. I know it's like 150. But anyway. He, that's really bad. He was paid $3 million dollars a year to... Uh, this is why I'm a Euro boy. What the fuck? Why would a team want to lose? What is this fucking shit? Holy fuck. Teams want to lose because of the way that the draft system is designed, okay? Uh, and it's the same for, like, the NBA as well, even though I think the NBA has a rule against this now to prevent this from happening. But teams want... Sometimes franchises want to tank their fucking season specifically so they can get a higher draft pick because one singular fucking star... Which one, by the way, you can, you know, you can trade your draft picks as well. But one singular, fu singular star that is at the top of the fucking lottery uh, can straight up change your, uh, straight up change your next uh, season. That's why they do this. That's why they fucking, you know, pay to lose, basically. Not pay to lose, but you know what I mean. The problem for him, the problem for Flores was that he was too good. Even when the, the franchise, the, like the owners wanted him to lose. Months of Twitch brain rot so much so that the second part of that is, uh, the second part of the fucking lawsuit is that they were trying to pay him to lose. Achieve $3 million mediocrity. Okay. Yes. So this is almost like Colin Kaepernick <laughs> getting paid. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's just like roots. Right. So, yes. according and that guy knows this, by the way, if he knows sports, he knows that I don't know sports and I know that. So that's bullshit. You know what I mean? 
Maybe because I, my best friend is a Jets fan and he tells me every fucking season that like, this is the season, like we're actually losing on purpose so that like, we can finally get like, I don't know, this guy or that guy, whatever the fuck. I hear it literally every time. But, but honestly, like if I know that as someone who doesn't watch any fucking football whatsoever, then, you know, two white dudes, two old white dudes on a fucking conservative talk show, like one of them is supposed to know this reality. So for him to just completely avoid that, for him to completely avoid mentioning that. <laughs> wait, you being, you mean to tell me Steven Crowder's fluffer isn't being 100% honest? Yeah, I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. Like how the fuck, how? How is he not gonna mention that? Like that's, that's so silly. Won't his audience know this? I thought conservative, like, you know, big macho men, I thought they watch football, they love football. It's like too fucking manly, you know? I thought their their consumption uh, was was tied back to their sexuality and their sexual identity and all this sort of other shit. Uh, will they not recognize that that's what teams do? Thank you, Fabian Simpicalist for the five tier one gift subs. According to what is out right now, he's alleging the Good Dolphins glory. owner, Stephen Ross, 12 years a coach, incentivized him, I'm just going to keep going, uh, to tank in 2019 <laughs> by offering $100,000 per loss. Now, that's pretty interesting because that would just increase the, the position of your draft. So if you lose the most games, you know, like Detroit, Dave, you guys are... Yeah, two straight winning seasons with the Dolphins after he was asked to throw the first season on the team. Never happened to a white coach before. Two straight winning seasons and fired. I'm a big Finns fan my whole life. With I'm sorry to hear that. You guys get to pick yes. first and maybe get the best athlete. And so a lot of times it's a quarterback. Wait, Detroit gets like, number one picks and they're still Detroit Lions? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we, done just, we just don't do much. Really with poorly with them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd insult him back, but he's just right. I'm right. Okay. And I, but I want I want them to be better. You know, I know you do. I their know. quarterback is going to the Super Bowl this year. He's just no longer with their team. Yeah, I know your so. heart's in the right place. <laughs> so Flores says Ross. The problem with Detroit is there's just so much ethnicity. Right. There's a lot yeah. of race. So this is about race, right? So this whole lawsuit, race, yeah. right? He says that he was he was pressured to illegally recruit a prominent good. quarterback. Exactly. I'm not sure how that's about race. And this is how his lawyer, <laughs> Flores' lawyer, described the situation. And litigation is not for everyone, but he stepped forward. Um, he's been referred to as the Rosa Parks of the NFL. By you. And <laughs> it's testament what? to his character. And the litigation will create change. <laughs> Really? What? Can a reporter just ask? I just want one of those people at the desk just when he goes, yeah, he's been referred to as a royal report. I want, without skipping a beat, one of those reporters to go, that's absolutely not true. <laughs> well, first of all, she took the bus because she was making roughly $3 million. A yes, year. exactly. <laughs> yeah. You're a Dude, it's always so funny because it's like they always talk about fucking uh, uh, the salary, right? Oh, you shut the fuck up. You make too much money. You shut the fuck up, right? They love, right wingers love doing this. Let's look at like the, I don't know, average coach salary. In the NFL, because he got three million dollars. Let's see. Let's see what the average coaching salary is. The average NFL coach makes two point one million dollars. NFL coaches make the most in San Francisco with three point three. Average compensation is fifty one percent greater than the average. Wait, hold on. I'm getting conflicting reports on this. Never mind. Sorry. The current uh, head coaches from whom data is available. The NFL coach makes six point six million on annually on average. That was wrong. The median salary from available coaches is five point five million. The remaining seven coaches are mainly new appointed ones. So the financial aspect of their contracts is still a mystery. But here are the list of NFL coaches, uh, NFL head coach salaries. Bill Belichick with twelve million. This is from twenty twenty one. Bill Belichick, 12 million. Urban Meyer, 12 million. Pete Carroll, 11 million. John Gruden. Brian Flores, out of the... Out of the fucking 25 coaches, Brian Flores is the last place. He's literally at the fucking bottom, dude. Are you that fucking... Are you that horny to just be racist? I didn't know that this was going to be the case, okay? I did not know. I, I just wanted to Google it. I wanted to see what the fuck was going on, okay? I wanted to see what was happening. Now, people are going to say Mike Tomlin is at 8 million, but that's not what we're talking about. Right now, what we are talking about is Brian Flores' $3 million salary, okay? We're talking about his personal salary that they're saying is incredibly high. 
Oh, I can't believe he's getting paid so much money to fucking lose. I can't believe he's getting paid so much money to suck. Okay? Just understand. Understand that I'm not referencing, like, specifically black coaches getting paid less or anything like that. What I'm simply stating is they are making it seem as though he is getting paid a lot of fucking money to lose. Okay, wait, what is this? What about these coaches? What? Denver 7 and 10 fired. New York Giants 4 and 13 fired. Question mark. What? Okay, sports guys, stop. You're throwing a lot of info my way, okay? And, and it's too much. My rat died last night, but I am happy to be here. Mike Tomlin has been a head coach for like 15 years. It's not comparable. 8 million is shameful. Exactly like Rosa Parks with your three million dollar year gold plated bus pass. <laughs> like, what bus are you at the back of? Because I would like to be there too. Oh my gosh, <laughs> a pretty nice bus. The Rosa Parks of the NFL. Well, and he's saying basically that the they would sick dogs on him if he sat in the wrong yeah, seat. So now remember, if you make any substantial amount of money, you're not allowed to complain. It's just so fucking stupid. Like, like, do you, what do you think he should be getting paid, dickhead? Do you think he should be getting paid even less than what he's getting paid? Like, yeah, three million dollars a year is a lot of fucking money, but like, what, what do you, like, in comparison, he's literally one of the fucking greatest coaches on the planet for football right now. Okay, if he's able to get to, if he's able to get to a head coaching position, that's it. He is magically and automatically one of the fucking best coaches right now. Also, of course, NFL is racist, lol. Like, in comparison to... In comparison to... He's not one of the best. Dude, dude, I'm saying... In comparison to, like, literally everyone starting off with your dad that's coaching a fucking Little League team, all the way up to... All the way up to all the available coaches that are out there. If you make it as a coach into the fucking NFL, you definitely have hit a certain level of fucking coaching. 